Hi, I'm Bill with Molly Aftermarket Inc. I'm here today to talk to you about bearings. And this is actually the first of a three-part series that we're going to do on bearings. Today's subject is going to be bearing failures, what the common failures are, how to recognize failures, what the difference between a failure and distress is, and so on. So let's get started. Next week, we're actually going to come back, by the way, and talk about oil, oil film thickness, proper lubrication, all that stuff that works together. And then the final week, actually, I forgot what the final week is. <laughs> Oh, the final week, we're going to talk about coated bearings, and that's going to be a really good presentation as well. You have to forgive me, I am getting old, you know, and it's hard to remember all this stuff, but uh, let's talk about bearing failures. Now, first of all, we have two terms we use in the business. One is bearing failures, the other is bearing distress. Now, failure means your engine blew up, and as far as you can tell, it was the bearings or the mangled remains of the bearings that caused the problems. That's what we refer to as a failure. Bearing distress, which is actually far more common, is you tear the engine down at the normal service interval. In this case here, it was three runs. You can see it's actually written on the back of here by the customer. Ran it for three runs. You tear it down and you look at it and you say, boy, that doesn't look good. I better get some help, figure out what's going on here. So failure, distress, important to recognize the difference. Let's get rid of failures. First of all, the two main reasons for failures, and you can become an expert real quickly. Two main reasons for failures are dirt, contamination, if you will, and lack of lubrication. Those two things cause 80% of bearing failures. So if you look at a bearing and it looks bad and you say, ah, I think it was dirt, you know, you've got a 40% chance of being right. So actually keep that in mind, those two things. Now we can even narrow it down, make it better than that. If it's a backyard kind of engine, a hobbyist, you've done your own work, you put it together in your garage, What's the first case bet? Dirt. Matter of fact, more dirt gets to an engine during its assembly than the whole rest of its life. So you and your friends are probably the culprits that got it in there when you put the engine together. Now professional race teams, on the other hand, when they send me product that's failed and we talk about it, I normally can eliminate dirt because they're very meticulous about how they put the engines together. So usually my first guess there is we look for lack of lubrication issues. See how simple that is? Those two things you've covered 40, or excuse me, 80% of the bearing failures. Now the other 20% are a hodgepodge of things. There's actually over 20 different issues that can arise that cause that distress. Again, not necessarily a failure, but distress. Now many of these, even me who sees a lot of bearings, I only see them maybe once every couple years. So we have a really nice guide online. If you go to Molly Aftermarket, or excuse me, molly-aftermarket.com, you'll find our bearing failure guide there on the website, and it'll show you many digital pictures, give you explanations, and lead you through that whole issue step by step by step. So you can match your bearing up to the picture, figure out what's going on. Tune in next week when we talk about bearing lubrication.